So we have user defined, uh, system defined schema and SLT derived schema. So the user defined schema is a schema which you create by uh, your own. Like uh, this is not system generated, like the one which we have with our own name is, is the system generated schema. But if you want to create a new schema, you, you can always do it. How, you, how do you do it? You select the system that you want. Okay, you select the system, you select the console, and you execute the query called create space schema create space schema and you can give any name that you desire. So okay, and I'm going to create a new schema. So I'll click on execute. Once I click on execute, let's see the new schema is created. So what is that? Let me see what is that. There is a schema called TMP1 already. So Uh, with the name uh, EMP1, uh, let me uh, try to give a new name. So EMP1, I took EMP1 try. It allowed me to create a schema called EMP. Once you create any new schema, always perform a refresh so that the new schema gets reflected in your so this is the new schema and you have all the structure that you need in the schema so you can create the objects that you design so earlier we failed to create the table right so i was able to create the table now so let us create a sample table and let me show you how i do it just right click on it select new table with the table name something called uh, tmp again see your wish I can give whatever name you want. Give some random value here. Something of your choice. And you just click on screen. So that's how you create the table. So once your table is created, always remember to refresh. Until and unless you refresh this, you're not going to see any uh, data here, even though you create some data in it. Now this is your table. This is the table that we have created. So you can see all the information that you need in this table. We want to see only the content. If you don't want to make any changes in the table, you can always uh, choose this. Okay. It will show you the content of the table, like what value does it have, all that. So we have only one entry in it, which is VLU. So now it is showing you the VLU. As I said, for each and every click that we perform here, that we do it manually. But in the background, you'll, you'll be able to see that uh, we are executing a query. And which user ID, which standard user ID is responsible for this? You, uh, if you can uh, go through your uh, uh, notes, which I have given to you yesterday. So underscore sys, underscore SQL, underscore ME. Analyzer is a standard user ID, which is responsible for any query execution in the system. So whatever query you're executing, the owner of this query who is executing it in the background is uh, this user ID, system user ID, sys underscore scale underscore analyze. Okay. That is what is happening here. So this is your, so let me show you this. Sorry. Okay. So that is your user defined schema. Any schema that you create on your own or any user, any schema that is defined by the user, by a standard database user, is user defined schema. So the system defined schema is the one is a schema which is getting created at the time uh, by default with your with the same name as your user ID is your system defined schema. That is one of the example and all the standard schemas that come by default. So these are all the standard schema that you're able to see. This AFL, this BI, this BIC, all these schemas are what? All these schemas come under system defined schema. Like you are not creating these schemas. These schemas are coming by default. Whenever a user ID is created, 
these schemas are coming by default in your catalog search. So you will only have you you are going to only have uh, unless because this user ID has wider access. The system user ID has wider access, so it will let me create uh, any data in this uh, uh, standard. What do you say? Standard uh, schemas. But usually, what happens in in the real time scenario when you create a user ID and you have your own user ID, you are only allowed to view the data under these uh, standard schemas. You will not be able to create any new data under these schemas. Like let us say, if you want to create any view under this, so you can already you can also see that there are already many standard views here. So if you want to create any new view or something, so this is the view that they have created under the view section. This is the standard view. That is, uh, they have created some BIMC, all authorized cubes. So this is the data that they have under this. So if you want to create some new view under the standard schema, like it is not allowed. You can only view the data which is already there in the standard views, unless and until you have elevated access like me. Like I am using the system user ID now, which is the ultimate user ID which is provided by SAP. So now I am able to do it. I'll show you those scenarios as well. Okay, don't worry. When I create a test user ID and uh, uh, Logging with the test user ID, you'll you'll come to understand like what what I'm saying. Okay, don't worry about that. So that is your standard schema. Okay, let's quickly see the third point here. So these are all the standard schemas, as I said, as I showed you now in the system. So this uh, each and every schema stores different types of data here. Sys underscore bi stores metadata to create uh, for of of all the created column views, and uh, bic usually show, stores. Uh, the data of the HANA models which are activated in the system. And repo is a main, is, is a very main schema actually. A repo is a very important uh, 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 schema. So in repo, you have all the objects uh, 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 under this repository. As I said earlier, so if, suppose if uh, Emmanuel is leaving the, Emmanuel, Emmanuel is leaving the company, okay? He has all these objects created under his schema. So let us say we are deleting his ID. So what happens? We are going to lose the data. So to avoid this to happen, sys underscore repo is a responsible repository to store all your data. Okay. And which user ID stores this data in the sys underscore repo? We have the system user ID called sys underscore repo with the same naming convention. We have another user ID, sys underscore repo. If you remember, as part of our discussion, we have seen that sys underscore repo is the internal database user for what? For HANA repository activities, for the standard HANA repository activities. What this user ID does is that, so whenever you create, suppose Emmanuel is creating some use under his schema, okay, some objects under his schema. So what this user ID, standard user ID will do, the standard user ID will replicate the same data which is which uh, Emmanuel is creating and it will save this data in this standard schema which is sys underscore repo so this is very important okay so that is why the standard user ids and standard schema if you are able to understand so you can uh, confidently say like okay we don't we do not lose the data and uh, the, all the schemas all the standard schemas or all the standard data which is created under the schema standard uh, uh, user schema is preserved under sys underscore repo repository so this is where you save all the object data that is created in your system. And, and the user ID, which is responsible to save all the data in this uh, repository is your sys underscore repo. This user ID is responsible for that. So never, so always make sure that all the standard user IDs, which I am listing here, are active, except for the system user ID. It depends upon your organization. Again, if it's uh, if it if it is going to ask you to, uh, keep it activated keep it activated uh, so it all depends on the compliance here so every organization has its own compliance process and their methodology okay based on that you can you can use the system user id or not it's up to you basically but all all the user ids uh, and also ignore this user id this is only used at the time of installation and you'll not see this user id under the user tab okay and all these user ids sys sys afl epm or repo or statistics and SQL analyzer, all these user IDs are very important. All these five user IDs are important. Make sure that you never deactivate these user IDs in your system. Because if suppose you are deactivating sys underscore repo, consider that you are not you're losing all the backup that you need. If a you if a user exits exists exits the organization, so what happens? 
you will lose all the data that that is under him so it is not automatically saved under uh, under the standard repository directory so you will not be able to see any data under sys underscore repo so be very careful and okay, same goes to sys underscore statistics sys underscore statistics user id does the same like it takes all the audit log that we have enabled and it is going to save under the schema sys underscore statistics schema simple sys underscore access also do, does the same thing access is nothing but the what all third party applications are connected to your uh, hana database what it does it saves all the data which is coming from this st standard uh, sorry this third party applications into the schema and the responsible user id is also similar to it sys underscore x there is also another user id sys underscore access which does it actually i'm i'll show it to you no worries so as i said these are your standard schemas right where is this sys repo okay under the sys repo so said let us say you are creating some views under your own schema so all these schemas will automatically get uh, replicated here and also for this to happen you have to keep this user id and uh, yeah you have to always keep this user id uh, intact you have to, you should never deactivate this user id or should never test this user id and basically you'll have uh, view access to all the scheme uh, all the objects that are under this this underscore repo by default with the public role which is assigned to you while creating the user id okay you are not going to save the schema names itself under sys underscore repo you will not have the scheme you will not be able to see any schema names here you will only able to see the objects which are created under that schema in the under sys underscore repo okay so uh, this slt derived schema I'll, I'll come to it okay a bit later in the next topics it's not uh, it's not the topic that we are going to discuss anytime soon because this to discuss this topic i have to explain you the application server which is access access engine that we have in hana db then i am going to explain you about this slt derived schema then you will be able to understand because i am not i will not be able to show it to you right away so, so yeah uh, before going to this privileges and all uh, let me give you something to explain you about okay let us see what i have added here yeah so object privileges you have seen it yesterday you have seen uh, me assigning all object privileges so what object privileges did i assign yesterday to best user id i have assigned the object privileges object privileges nothing but you you are going to assign the schemas that you have created so if you want to give some schema access to other user you can always assign the object privileges in the user id let me show you that so in the object privileges yesterday i was able to show you like the uh, i was assigning execute or select statements in it so what does it mean this is where i elaborated a few privileges so i'm going to show you what access we are going to get okay we are into the system user id here so let me okay all these user ids yesterday what we have done we have created uh sorry so okay let's create a new user id instead so how do you create users uh you create users by uh, click right click doing a right click here creating a new user only difference between user and restricted user is that you're going to check and uncheck the jdbc odbc server access and this new restricted user is for uh, third party users for not going to access hana db let me create a test user id See what happens if I select this option is that uh, so after I do my first login as this test user ID, it will ask me to change the initial password to a new password. 
so that is what you do in your ideal scenario okay and in the real time scenario you never select this option as no whenever you are giving a new password because i shouldn't know i i shouldn't know your password as an admin so once you log in the first thing that you have to do is that you have to you have to reset this password to a new password okay so that no one uh, no one knows your password because this is all uh, crucial data that you are dealing with okay let us say if you are deleting some model or something or some object you that that you have created in the system you never know like there can always be an outage here so don't take any any chances with this uh, user id because this hana db user id is very hana db access is very restricted and it is very critical in the in an organization okay okay fine so i have given the initial password here okay so i am going to save this user id i am going to execute this user id and what role is assigned here by default i did not do it right Public. the system itself is doing it with the help of which user id sys user id sys user id is your standard user id which assigns public role whenever you are creating a new user ID. okay yeah so please don't forget this so this is the basic thing okay so once you are once we are going into the roles concept we are going to assign more roles here okay by creating the custom roles and by assigning the as the, um, the required privileges to those custom roles we are going to create different users so what kind of users are there in our system in hana db system administrator users and come on guys administrator users and system users okay two kinds of users are there so under administrator users we are administrator users modelers will be there developers will be there three kinds of users will be there so we are going to create different roles one for security admin one for basis admin okay one for modeler one for developer we are going to create four or five roles which will complete our role management co concept but before you you dive into the role concept you should understand all these privileges what is a system privilege what is an object privilege object privileges we already covered system privileges i am going to show it to you now so system privileges we have object privileges analytical privileges package privileges application privileges so if you need to understand all these privileges in order to be ready to create any roles in the system okay so this is one way of creating a user id guys okay there is another way that you can create a user id so it you now select the system open the sql console is it open okay let me create a user here create user mm. hello okay password password should always be in double quotes okay you have to give the initial password in double quotes okay yeah. So you can give whatever password you want. Okay. Once you are done with your query, so this is the query statement, guys. This is the SQL query statement, which allows you to create users. But in ideal scenario, we never use this query. But let us say if you have to create hundred users at a time, hundred users at a time. Let us say if you have to assign. Hundred, uh, like the same privilege to hundred users. You cannot, uh, you cannot, like you cannot be creating these users manually, right? You will simply enter the SQL statement. Not even that. You will copy this SQL statement into the word pad. And if you are uh, good with the scripting, uh, I think so. You might have already uh, like used the scripting in the word document. So you can use this, and you can create an Excel document as an input document for your word document. And you can uh, basically use that script to create all the user IDs at once. So I'm going to show it to you if you're not familiar with this 
uh, thing also is not an issue i'm going to show you how we can create mass users at a time by creating multiple uh, queries so these two fields will be uh, as uh, these two fields will be our input fields which we are get which we are going to get data from the excel okay and we are going to generate multiple lines multiple sq sql lines for multiple users and we are going to create users any number of users that you like at the same time uh, for privileges also we are going to do the same thing let us say if you are if you want to assign the same privilege to user or for the that, that instance you can assign multiple privileges to different kinds of privileges to different users at a time using a script so that is easy don't worry i'm going to show it to you okay in the previous in the, in the coming sessions okay so the user id is created with the password speed one two three four five six if you want to log in as that uh, user you can do it always so let me try to log in remember that's hello and speed one two three four five six okay so what are we going to do add system with different user so what is the user id user is hello Okay, so if you click on store username and password, it is not going to ask you the user ID and password once again. Okay, so whenever you open your workspace, you will be automatically logged into the system that you need. I'm going to click on finish. I'm able to log in as user hello. So right now I'll, I'll not be able to have anything except for the basic view. I'll have always have you access. Okay, I'll always have you access for all the standard data that is there in the system. Because of which role? Because of the public role. This is the standard role which comes by default in the system, okay? And public roles hold all the data that is there in your system, okay? You'll be able to view all the data once this public role is assigned by the system. So that is how I created a uh, user ID, a test user ID. Save this. Okay, by default, uh, by, but earlier you saw that you were able to access, uh, you were able to see all the content and everything. But uh, in order to see the content, the standard content even, or your own content, like uh, the, your own content, what you need to do, you need to have uh, a particular uh, privilege assigned to you, which I'll show you, which is repository underscore trust. SAP itself is asking that, uh, okay, you need this repository in order to do, in order to do anything. Yeah. Let me assign that repository. Sorry, I had to take the break. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. You can assign this privilege, then only you will be able to see the content here. So how do you assign this uh, repository underscore repo? How we, how we have assigned this access so far? You can go to user. So I, I'll again go as a system user here. The system user ID has the privilege to assign the access. Hello cannot assign uh, privileges on his own. What I'm going to do, I'm going to search for uh, the user ID hello. Where is hello? Okay, uh, again, you have to refresh in order to get the content here. Okay. Now you should be able to see the user ID hello. Okay. I'm able to see hello. Okay, hello has no privileges assigned to him. So it's obvious that he's not able to see any data in the content folder. But okay, let me show you. Okay.
repository underscore rest is the standard privilege that you need in order to see the data of content. Okay. Repository underscore rest. Okay. Along with it, I'm going to give only execute access here. I'm not going to give any other access. Okay. I'm only going to give execute. Okay. Once you, once you are able to perform any action successfully, you'll be able to see that the user is successfully changed. Okay. Or else you're going to see the error message as well. Always remember that. If, if you're going to see the error message, something has failed, and you have to analyze the issue. Okay, here see it is a different thing. You're not assigned, you're not now you have not assigned a schema here. Instead, you have assigned the privilege that is needed to access your content folder. If a new user wants to access his content folder, he has to have repository rest, repository underscore rest with execute access. Then and only then he'll be able to see any data under your content folder. And always remember to give only execute access for the repository on this podcast. Privilege. And, and who is the owner for this? It's the system user ID, which is the owner for this repository. Now see if I'm able to see this. I'm going as a user hello again. I'll try it. Okay. Just refresh it. Okay. Once and whenever you get new privileges to you, just refresh your user ID. Let's see. So there is no content available, so that's why you're not able to see anything here. But if you, uh, if I assign some packages here to this user ID, so now he doesn't have any packages. I can create any new package to view any new packages also of your own. Of your own, you have to have this repository on this cottage. Otherwise, you'll not be able to see. So let us see. Okay, and um, in best, so there are some packages already. I've created this dummy packages earlier uh, to show it to you. Okay, so I have created uh, some package under uh, package under uh, system. Let me show you that package. Sorry, where do you access package? Uh, you access package under content. Okay, so what I did, I basically so I created a temporary package here called TMP90, and I have created an attribute view. We don't get confused. Okay, we are not going to create any attribute views in the system. Usually, I created a as a temp uh, yeah, just an attribute view with no data here. But I'm going to show you a sample attribute view. I, I'm going to create some sample views so that I can show you how I restrict this access and all in, in the roles, okay, in the coming session. So for that, I created a, a temporary view, like uh, I've right-clicked on the package. I went to new, and I selected attribute view, and I just uh, uh, clicked on execute to save this uh, uh, temporary view in this. Okay, nothing else. So, so see whatever. Uh, so there are two uh, kinds of objects here. One is your catalog objects. Uh, catalog objects are called uh, uh, static objects. These are all static objects. Okay, you cannot import these catalog objects from one system to another system. Okay, from development environment to quality environment, you cannot import this, or you can you cannot transport these objects. But whatever views that you are able to create on, uh, in a package, let me show you. So your package is in content folder. So let us say you, uh, whatever views you can uh, able to see here, like attribute view, analytic view, calculation view, analytic privilege or procedure or a decision table. So whatever data or whatever objects that you are creating under your package in the content folder, you will be able to transport this from one system to another system. Okay, these are called runtime objects. Okay, what are these called? These are called runtime objects. Basically, what you can do with the runtime objects, with runtime objects, you'll be able to transport these objects from one system to another system. So if you want to transport the data, if you want to transport your views, you have to create the data under your packages. Okay, I'm going to discuss about it. Let me show you. Okay, these are the different kinds of privileges that we assign. Okay, when we are assigning the object privilege, just uh, just now we have assigned a privilege here to yeah, this hello. Okay, yeah, hello is here. So we have created, uh, we have assigned a privilege here. While assigning, we are assigning some access here, and all the all the privileges left that you see for this thing. Okay, has uh, has a significance of its own. Okay, so what significance does it have? Create any. So you can you can go through the content. Okay, it, it basically gives the access. It's very simple. It will give access to create all kinds of objects, tables, views, or sequence. So 
for the user okay in that particular schema so while assigning that access if you want the user to be able to create uh, any kinds of tables views or sequences under that particular schema you can give this uh, uh, you can check you can check this privilege while giving it okay this is a different uh, thing but while assigning the schema let us say you'll you'll get all these options here so this is your own schema that's why you're not able to see this but yeah if let us say if you're uh, if you're assigning some other schema some third party schema you'll be getting all these options create any is there so by create given create any access you'll be allowed to create any data under that schema okay like tables views or anything that you want anything that you desire okay you basically get it from there all privileges is nothing but selecting all privileges and check all the privileges that are available for that particular schema which is going to give unlimited access to that user for that particular scheme. It's up to you again. It's up to you and it's up to the requirement that you give this access to the user. Usually we will not give all privileges to the user, okay? Because you'll be able to do anything with your schema. You have to always be your uh, be the owner of the schema. If you're giving all privileges, then uh, uh, like it's called a shared, a shared owner thing. Like you're not the only owner of the schema. Although you have created that schema, you have created the table use and all that. But always remember, if you are giving all privileges to the user, he'll be able to do anything similar to you in, in, in the schema. Okay. Just be careful for that. <coughs> Understood. Yeah. And coming to drop and alter, if suppose if I've created any view here, I've created some table here. In, in, uh, let me show you this. What table did I create under system? I created or under best I've created some table here. Let me expand that schema and show you that what happened. I think children has anchored the moment. I don't know what happened. Let me refresh this. Something wrong with the system or what? There is some issue with the H best user ID. Okay. Remove this. Okay, I removed it. Let us use hello instead. Okay, let me create a table for you quickly. I'll go to catalog. Where is hello schema? I'm creating a table view. Sorry, create table here. Let us see if it is going to accept this one. Okay. So we have to create this table under the schema. Okay. Just refresh this and you'll be able to see the new table that we created. Okay. This is the table that we have created. Okay, so uh, let us say we have created a table. So th this will be able to drop it anyways because we are owner of this schema. Hello is our own schema. So we will be able to drop it. Dropping is nothing but deleting. We'll be able to delete this. Okay, it'll ask, it will, it will give you these options, restrict. If dependent objects exist, no objects will be uh, uh, deleted. Let us say you have created some views using this table. And you, it is it is simply saying that okay, only this table will be deleted, that but the view will be intact, and the other tables which are added to that views will be intact. Okay, if you select cascade, what is going to happen? All the objects, all the objects that are linked to this table object are also deleted along with it. So it is giving it is giving you a warning message here: the object and all its dependent objects will be deleted if you are going to select this option. Okay, so always be careful when you do something. Okay, when you are create deleting any view, not you, sorry, <laughs> the modelers or uh, developers will take care of this. Okay, it's not our headache because we are we are, we are not we are only seeing this for uh, our uh, session. Okay, we are not going to delete it in the real time as a security admin. Okay, excuse me. Okay, you can either delete the object or you can delete all rows which are there in it. Okay, I'm going to delete a object here, catalog object here. 
So I'm going to select uh, cast it so that all dependencies are removed. Okay, I'll click on delete. So I'll be able to drop it. Okay, and now it is dropped. You can refresh and see. Now we just drop. Okay. Let us say, okay, this is the table which we have created. Okay. And we have dropped it also. Let us go and see. Let us say, uh, uh, this is my system user ID. And let me create a new table here under catalog. Where is my schema? My schema is obviously this uh, system schema. Okay. In system schema, let me create a table. There are many tables, I think. That's okay. I have already created this uh, table. Great. This table is already there. Okay. TMP table is already there. Okay. What I'm going to do, I am going to assign the system schema access to my uh, user. Hello. Okay. Because I'm the owner. I'm going to go to user section. In user section, I'm going to select hello. In hello, what we have, we will go to uh, what privilege do I need to add now? I should add system schema here. System schema, which because we I have created the table under what what schema? System schema. So I'll select system schema here. System. Let's see if the system schema is coming or not. Some time to search. Okay. System schema should come directly. But okay. Since we have everything under system schema, so it will take time. Okay. Uh, it's fine. It's hard to search in that way. Let's do one thing. Let's create a new schema under the system user ID, okay? Which will be what? What will you call it or call the schema if you create it on your own? It's called a uh, user defined schema, basically, okay? Let's see, you can open SQL console. This cat uh, Under this catalog, you can create the schema. How do you create schema? You'll use query to create a schema. Create schema okay. Just once you are done with this, you can execute. Okay, what happened? It's throwing some error. Could not execute temp. Incorrect screen. Ah, okay. There is some issue. Okay, here the spelling is wrong, so it is not allowing us to do this. Let's correct it and let's execute. Will be able to create the schema successfully. So statement uh, is executed successfully, and uh, the schema is created. So to see the schema, you have to refresh. Select refresh, and you'll be able to see the schema T E M P P. Okay, under T E M P P, I'm going to create a new table. New table. Okay, let me close all the sessions here. Save. Okay, so what we'll have it here, we'll have, we'll have something we have called the MPP. Okay, and that is the value that we have here. And let us name the table as well. I'll name it as TMPP, something like that. Okay. I'll click on. So this is the table which we have created under TEMPP. P uh, schema. This is a user defined schema which is created by the system user ID. Okay. So what I'm going to do? Let us let me close this thing. It's already over. So I'll go under user folder now. I'll go under hello. Now it will be easy for me to identify that uh, particular schema to add it. Okay. So this is the schema section that we have. I'll select. And what do we have here? T M. Am I wrong? No, it's correct. <laughs> okay, but it is showing me the table instead. But uh, I've given, given this thing as wrong with this. this is... Okay, 
you got it. Uh, this is the schema that we have created. I've added that schema. See, let us say I'm not giving drop access. Okay. I'm only giving select access to user. Hello. So if I only give select access to user, hello, he'll only be able to see the data. He'll not be able to drop the table or delete the table from that uh, particular schema. Let me show you that. Okay, now I have assigned uh, TMP privilege to him. Now what hello will be able to see? Hello will be able to see the privilege under his schema. So let me refresh this user ID. Okay, this user ID got refreshed. Now let us see the schema, if, if the schema is added or not. See, the schema is added. And schema will have only the select privilege. So if only under select privilege, okay table we have created right under under this uh, tables okay let us see okay you will be able to view the content of them you, you can open the content as a user id hello you will able to you will to see this is the content that you have okay close this try to drop this or delete let us try let us see if it is giving any warning or not okay it will not allow you to drop the table until you have the sufficient privilege. It will only allow you to view the data in T TMPPP. So in order to get him going, in order to give him access to drop the table, what do you, what do you need to do? You need to do, give access for him to drop. Okay, I'll click on execute. So he'll be able to drop any data under the schema. So this is your control uh, control center boss, basically. So whatever access you want to control, which is related to your object privilege, or be it any privilege that we are going to see in our further sessions, system privilege or analytic privilege, whatever privilege. So the access that you want to restrict for that particular object is controlled under this center. Basically, this is your control center where you control everything related to your object schema. Okay, I'll I'll not uh, I, I'll not extend this session. Okay, I'm not I'm going to wrap this session up. But yeah, please stay attentive. Okay, so now I've assigned uh, drop. Okay, drop access, drop privilege to the user. Hello. So now, what you're going to do? Always refresh it. Once you get the sufficient access, I'm going to refresh this. And now I'm going to try once again to drop the table as user. Hello. Under tables. There is a TMPPP table. Now try to delete it. Okay. Is it gone or not? It's gone. They were able to successfully delete it. So that is what this drop command does. Okay. It, it will allow you to drop any kind of data. Now I'm only showing you the table data, guys. Okay. You can drop any data under the schema, basically. You have multiple data. You have you will be having triggers. You will be having views. Okay, you will be having synonyms, sequences, and procedures is another another very important topic. In procedures, people are going to uh, use programming. The developers are going to use programming to create multiple procedures. These procedures will be used by the modelers. Okay, so this is a very important topic. So whatever data that you have under this particular schema, user will be able to drop any kind of data from this objects okay always be careful when you are giving drop access to someone or delete access to someone okay both acts similarly never uh, give access to drop it's my suggestion always give uh, access to select or execute select will give you to view the data execute will give you access to add any data okay same goes for index also so if you are not giving index to your uh, uh, table value like i've created a table and I've added some value there called some uh, some temporary entry I have given in the table, but I have not given the index. So if you are not going to give the index, it is going to be very hard. It is going to be very difficult. Whenever you are going to execute the query, it will take a lot of time to search for that particular row. Okay. So always indexing indexing is key in your SQL uh, in your SQL tables. Okay, when you whenever you are creating tables, always you give index. So if you give index, you'll give the access for giving the index to your objects okay, i'll tell you that drop and alter is same okay 
drop and alter both are same you will be able to do any kind of uh, actions to the object uh, uh, sorry schema data that you have select insert update and delete are all uh, related to your sql commands you can you will be able to insert select means you will be able to view the data insert you can add any kind of data to that particular table that we have created or you can update it and delete is a last thing delete you can delete any kind of data in those views in the table views let us say in the table you have the content we have created one entry you can delete that entry from the table so that is what this delete command gives you delete command select insert update will give you the data as mentioned here okay index already as i said you can give indexing so okay indexing is always always a, a, a privilege which is very important when you give it so while giving this uh, index the index will always be unique okay and it will always uh, help you to fetch the data quickly okay and this is only this index command uh, sorry this index privilege is only applied to a schema or table and table type okay it is not applied to all the privileges that we are going to see index is limited okay you will not be able to see this index for other than uh, a schema or a table execute is again uh, you can you will be able to execute anything in, the, in that particular schema that you assign that is your execute command execute command also you can give you will be able to add any data into the view by giving execute you can give execute nowadays 